This is Shira Rubinoff, CEO of the Cybersphere Group. I'm here with Arundam Banerjee, Technical Fellow VP of Product and Architecture for NetApp. Arundam, what a pleasure to be with you here today. Thank you, Shira. This is a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. So today we're going to talk about security in AI guardrails and governance, mm -hmm. which is a super important topic, and I'm really happy to dig deep with you on this. So Arundam, sure. what key data guardrails has NetApp put in place to ensure the integrity and providence of data used by AI systems? And how does your governance framework prioritize securing the AI data pipeline over the AI model themselves? A bit of a mouthful, but I'm sure you have a lot to say about these. Yes, that's, that's a lot, but <laughs> hey, we are a data company who have been managing customers' data for more than three decades. And customers' data not only means the actual production data, but also telemetry data that we manage for all our customers worldwide. Mm -hmm. And we aggregate the telemetry data to enable AI-driven analytics and predictive failure analysis of the data. Uh, so how we manage the data? We have very stringent data governance policies to manage the data. We make sure that only the customer or the uh, support engineer working on the case can work on that. We have things like CII and PII information where we uh, redact customer sensitive or personal information. And then we go through audits with our customers every year to make sure we are managing their data uh, as per the stringent guidelines. And keep in mind, we do have customers in pharma and healthcare and finance, which are very regulated industries. And all different now we regulations take that, for each one. Ex exactly. Yeah. And now we take that learning into our products as well. Okay, we, we now implement those guard rates uh, those stringent access policies into our products over and over again and make this an iterative process that we learn from customers and we give it, give that learning back to them. Like today in our products, we have about 86 classifiers that classify sensitive information for the customers. We make sure that the data and its permissions never leave, like the security posture of the data is maintained. And we also make sure that uh, the source data and the retrieval uh, per applications always have access to the same set of permissions. That is how we apply the guardrails to uh, our products. Oh, very interesting. And you've certainly taken all the different elements into account, which is certainly very important and very yes. impressive there. And how can organizations balance the need for rapid AI innovation with robust mm -hmm. security measures, particularly when it comes to the challenges of managing identity and access for AI data pipelines? That's, that's a very relevant question, Shira, in today's world. The biggest challenge to increase AI-driven innovation is to make your data AI ready. Yes. Is to get your organization-specific data to be protected. Uh, let me give you an example. As a pharma company, who is innovating in uh, drug discovery, for example, needs to make sure that the patient data is never used inappropriately, right? So how do we do that? As I said, uh, we make sure that the security posture of the data never leaves because in an AI pipeline, data is moving from one system to the other. You are having to move data to where the GPUs are, to where all your analytics platforms are. But it is important that your access controls and permissions are always traversing with the data so that you could use the same governing principles that the source had specified to everywhere that your data is being now accessed from. Hmm. Right. And, and then uh, as you go through the pipeline, you also add things like classifiers uh, that identify sensitive data at, for every stage, like you could have sensitive data for running some service IDs for doing some basic classification. You could have sensitive data for access. For example, my CEO and I, when I'm looking at the same financial documents for the company, may get very different outcomes when we are running it through the AI models. Mm -hmm. 
So that role-based access also comes in, and that comes in only because we are maintaining the security posture of the data throughout the AI lifecycle. And that's that's very key element when dealing around data and AI uh, to take note of. And when we look to the future of AI, what are the most critical emerging threats related to the data supply chain and how is NetApp evolving its data management strategy to ensure the trustworthiness and security of AI data at scale? The biggest challenge in today's AI world is because of the unstructured data, the multimodal unstructured data. Yeah. In the structured world, the schema did tell us what we need to protect because the schema was telling us all about the data. In this unstructured world, we cannot understand the schema till we have AI models scan the data to understand what the data contains. And that is the biggest challenge as we see going ahead. You cannot move the data without security risks unless you know what the data contains. So as a future, we see in this unstructured world that you will need to have all the governance and the security and access policies in place right where your data is generated. We have to make every byte of data intelligent with respect to who can access the data. Certainly, it's not only who could access the data or what the data contains, who it's relevant to, yes. and are the appropriate yes. measures taken around it, yes. as you mentioned, guardrails. So, yes. so we are seeing yeah. in, in this world that um, all of the data uh, structuring, all of the governance needs to be applied at the source. Correct. And with the leveraging of uh, things like near data compute, that now you can bring AI near where your data is. Yeah, well, that's very important, certainly. And what is the yes. single most important action a C-suite executive should take to establish a data-centric governance strategy for the AI initiatives? Mm -hmm. And how do leaders balance the ethical and regulatory demands of data providence with pressure for rapid innovation? So there's a lot there to unpack. There is a lot there. First, make sure we recognize the problem, that governance is not an afterthought. That's the most important thing. You do not kick the can down the road. You want to build it into your business processes. That's number one. Then understand your data estate. Your data estate is a mix of structured and unstructured data with 85% of your data being unstructured. And when I say understand your data estate, discover it. Understand what kind of data is there in your data estate. Be able to classify it, because unless you classify, you cannot govern the data. And once you classify the data, you apply the policies that you want to apply to your data so that we know what kind of access capabilities will be defined based on that governance. Right Sorry. now, the final thing is you implement traceability to your data. Because the data is moving across the data pipeline, you need to ensure that I can trace an outcome to the data, to various versions of the data, and to various versions of the models that was used to infer cognitive capabilities from the data. So we need to ensure that the data and the model is version together so that I can trace it back whenever I want to trace it back to. It is as simple as that. Without uh, traceability, AI systems cannot be trusted. And without trust, they're not usable. Well, so that is the evolution every uh, C-suite exec has to think about as we are evolving for this new world driven by AI. Well, you raised a lot of important points. And I think, you know, from all my conversations with NetApp and all the executives as well, data governance is so critical and it needs to be given more of a spotlight to really understand why it needs to happen, how it needs to happen, the reasons behind it. And if it's not done the right way, there's going to be yes. big problems across the board. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with our audience today. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. our conversation. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you, Shira. It's an honor to be here. Thank you.